All right, well, we'll just keep going. Um, on my left though, you guys, you can scan my media Instagram on my right. I just started a brand new Instagram account called MP Success. Uh, you can scan the QR code with your phone and uh, follow me on there. I'm gonna be posting two quotes a day around uh, wealth and success mentality. So it's really just something to bring you up where really social media is is kind of a, uh, it can be a drain. It can be something that uh, brings you down and is a distraction. So hopefully this in your feed will help remind you what you're here for, what you're doing throughout the week and uh, be a help that way. Uh, to kind of bring it back guys, we're gonna be talking about what I call and uh, Jeff Bezos has referred to as day one. And so we're gonna do a, a deep dive into like what this is all about, why he did this, um, and yeah, kind of go from there. So Jeff, Jeff Bezos, as you guys know, he's not just some small guy. Like when I was looking at like, who do you emulate? Who do you, like, who are you gonna look to if you want success? Who are you gonna look to if you want to like fall short of greatness? I thought of, well, the greatest. Like, and, and not the greatest of someone like a hundred or a thousand years ago. It's like the greatest now. And so, of course, my mind went to Jeff Bezos, went to a couple others also. Um, but Jeff Bezos really is like kind of the most recent, um, I don't want to call him, ex probably an example of greatness. And so just to go through some stuff about Jeff, if you guys aren't familiar with him, Jeff is an American entrepreneur. Uh, media proprietor, investor, and a computer engineer at heart. He was actually a computer engineer. Uh, he's the founder and executive chairman of Amazon. So, you know, I would imagine most of you guys are familiar with this company, uh, where he previously served as the chairman, served as president and CEO, with a net worth currently at almost $200 billion this month in September 2021. He's either, and we're not, we're still debating this. There's a lot of places debating this, but he's either the wealthiest or second wealthiest person in the world, according to Forbes and Bloomberg Billionaires Index. So Amazon was the, the mechanism. It was the tool that got him to greatness. And Jeff started Amazon in 1994. I know a lot of you guys are thinking, gosh, it feels like I didn't start getting packages until just even in the last five years. But Amazon has been around, guys, for a long time. And it started in 1994 as an online bookstore. Remember that? It was like a place that you would go get books and used books from other consumers. And after 27 years is now a trillion, not a billion, a trillion dollar business. And it's something that's used globally. Amazon is still an online bookstore. They still sell books, surprisingly. And it's one of the largest server providers. So I think it was a decade ago that the majority of web traffic, the majority of data storage in this country actually ran through Amazon servers. It's one of the largest online e-commerce sites so, you know, if you want a product or you want to buy something, as a lot of you know, it's typically Amazon that you're doing that through. It's also a media provider, right? We've got Audible. We've got this now digital bookstore. We have this, uh, we have Amazon uh, TV and Amazon is a media provider, right? We've got Prime Television, which is like its own media creator. They make movies, they make TV series. And as you guys know, there's just, there's so many other things that Amazon's invested in and currently doing. So the excitement of starting a business, can you imagine, like I, I love showing that picture. Let's go back just really quick. This is Jeff Bezos. And you can see like how old this was. This was like in the nineties, but this is Jeff Bezos at his desk for Amazon. And he literally has spray painted Amazon on a sign. And you can tell like, this is like, like ground, like the ground level, right? Like this is like startup of startups, this, this photo. And you can imagine what it was like the first couple of years starting a business like this, like the excitement, like remember as a, you know, for coaches, uh, you guys remember like the first day you came on as a trader, 
like the idea and the opportunity of starting basically your own business as a day trader. Or for those of you CODs, it's like the first day that you like said, yep, I'm doing it. I'm in, I'm doing my business. Like what that first day was like. And there's just something really exciting about that first day of business, about like starting your startup, right? And early in Jeff Bezos' business, he developed a culture called Get Big Fast. And this was back in the late 90s. And after about two years, so this was like 97 to 99, after about two years of examining this, he realized that this was the goal, not the culture. He was realizing that this wasn't, it wasn't the culture that he wanted to create. He wasn't going to build a culture around get big fast. He could remember the first day that he went into business, the way he felt, the energy that had filled the room, the excitement he and his team had. And he was, even after just two years, was wondering, where did it go? How after two short years had the energy begun to fade? Was this just like what happens in business? This must be, you know, this must be what every business goes through. And then he did maybe the unthinkable or maybe what was contrary to popular opinion and he questioned it. And he asked himself, is there a better way? Now, I know if you've done any kind of business, whether it's trading, whether it's starting your own business, whether it's selling a product or offering a service, that this is something that we all experience. Like we're all guilty of day one mentality, the energy, the excitement, maintaining it, and then somehow, somewhere, some way it fades. And for some of you, it's really quick. For some of you, it's like it took a couple days. <laughs> For some of you, it's a couple years, you know, and then it starts to happen. But regardless, I think we all can relate to having experienced this, even if it's not in this business. We know that it's something that has happened and likely will happen in an existing venture or business that we're in. And so Jeff really came up with this idea, like, is there a better way? And as someone who's created a trillion dollar business, and is worth over $200 billion, I would have to say he kind of cracked the code. And he created what's now called in his organization, the day one mentality. And this is actually a picture of this day one image that he put and, and plastered to a wall because of how valuable this was to the culture of his business. So in 1997, Jeff Bezos wrote a letter. So this is two, two years after inception, but uh, 1987, he writes this letter to all of his shareholders titled, this is day one for the internet. So just let that soak in for a minute. Like what would that mean if you were starting a book company, an online bookstore, but it had to do with this company called Amazon and he's relating it to the internet. This is day one for the internet. And in this letter, Jeff describes to his shareholders how what their company is doing could be compared to being in a company that was involved in creating the internet. Like, you guys remember what it was like when the internet came out? Like, like how exciting it was and how this like new way to express information was showing up was going to change the world? And... Jeff describes in this letter how his company, Amazon, this bookstore, this, <laughs> this exchanging of books back and forth was going to be like that. And this letter to shareholders created a sense of stability and vision for the futures. I mean, imagine yourself as someone who was a stockholder in Amazon early on a seed funder, like someone, maybe even a, a venture funding company that was like going to, you know, prop this up and see where Jeff was going to take this. And Jeff writes this letter to you and says, guys, we are creating a business and the way we're going to do it is through a mentality like this company is doing its day to day as if we're starting the internet an idea like the internet. And the letter was so profound and so popular that shareholders hold, they held on to the stock. They didn't want to sell. 
because they saw the vision of this company. They saw the future of what Jeff Bezos was going to build, even though at the time all it was was books. And it attracted actually even more investors. More investors were like, I want a piece. I don't know what, how this book thing is going to transform into this massive investment, but I really believe in the culture that Jeff Bezos is breeding. This, this culture of growth, this culture of, of like, this is the beginning. This is the start. This is ground floor entry level every day. And it attracted more investors as those who heard Jeff speak knew he was going to build this solid future, this solid company. And so what is day one? What is this day one mentality that Jeff Bezos used to inspire one, his employees, but also two, the investors, the people coming in? It's about maintaining a long-term focus. Even though it's like, wait, I thought it was like about day one. Yeah, I get, it is. It's about this day one mentality, but it, the day one mentality is about accomplishing goals with a long-term focus. It's about obsessing over customers and their needs. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. It's about boldly innovating to meet those needs, the needs of your customers. The day one mentality is so meaningful that Jeff named their first location. He actually had a building that was, you know, staffed with, you know, a handful, dozens of people. Uh, it, you know, obviously started with him and a couple people and grew. But he actually named the building day one. And even after he left, even after he took off and moved to a bigger building, a bigger facility, which obviously they had to do, they took it with him. He's like, no, no, this is coming with me. I'm not leaving this as day one. Day one's coming with me. And so they took the sign and they renamed the next building day one also. So this day one mentality is about being constantly curious, nimble, and experimental. It means being brave enough to fail, even if it means that by applying lessons learned, like from the past, right, we can better surprise and delight our customers in the future. So it's not about like winning all the time. It's not about getting it right every time. It's about being okay to fail. It's about having the vision of success and what's, what's the one thing driving the success? It's the customer. And we'll, and we'll talk about this in like our application, but it's, I just start thinking about this. Like what, how can I start shifting my success so that it's based around the customer, not what I think the customer wants, not what I think the customer needs. Day one is both a culture and an operating model. It's not just like, oh, this, let's just talk about day one. Let's just have a mentality around it. It actually, from a culture standpoint, translate into like how we're actually going to operate, like how we're actually gonna do things day to day. And it puts the customer at the center as it did with Amazon. Amazon did everything this way. So it's like, okay, it's day one, the energy of day one, the excitement around day one. It's like we're in a company that like in, is inventing the internet and how it's gonna change the world. And it's like, okay, with that in mind, what's my customer's needs? How am I gonna attract them? Where are they? How am I gonna find them? In contrast, day two is uh, stasis. And stasis, is followed by irrelevance. And we're gonna talk a little bit about, more about this, but day two is stasis, it's followed by irrelevance, followed by excruciating, painful decline. How many of you guys have experienced that in a past business, or maybe that's what you're experiencing even now? It's so painful. And then what it eventually leads to, unfortunately, is death. And this is a mentality, it's not actually a model, meaning that you can be in a business and someone lives in day one more often, lives in day one and takes that business completely to a vertical of success. And then you have some uh, individuals who live more in day two and this is what happens in the same model, same product, same business organization, the whole thing, but day one model, day two model and uh, the results follow. So how do you stay in this day one? What's what, what do we want to avoid? Why is this day two so uh, 
so important to understand and so important to avoid. So first, uh, we, we talked about stasis and we, you have to understand what, the, what this means. Like what does stasis mean? It's a period or a state of inactivity or uh, equilibrium. So it's like we're not doing anything or what we're doing, I would say it better, uh, and it, this might land easier, it's about maintaining. Like rather than growth, rather than innovation, rather than testing, we're, sta we're like stabilizing, we're maintaining, we're um, doing the grind, right? We're just doing the things and the structures that we've already set up. This is followed by irrelevance, which is the state of what you're doing lacks meaning. So once you hit a, a period of, of stasis, then you're going to go into this thing of irrelevance, which is like, I just don't know why, if you ever have said it this way, I just don't know why I'm doing this anymore. And if you've ever heard yourself say that, it's because you've lost the meaning. You've lost the focus of your customer being the center. And so you have no meaning now. You, ha you have no drive, uh, which, you know, it's not that you're actually lacking meaning, it's that your meaning has become negative. Your, your irrelevance, uh, you're in the state of irrelevance because the meaning around your business might be like, oh, I'm just doing enough to get by. It's not like I'm doing something to change the world. I'm doing something to change the norm. I'm doing something to shake up uh, the industry or whatever. But irrelevance uh, can be a very dangerous place because now all you're doing is just the grind work, just enough to maintain what you have. And this is followed by the excruciating and painful decline. And this is just what happens when you stop innovating, guys. You detach. And when you detach from your meaning, uh, you get stuck. You get stuck in this grind that we're talking about. And this ultimately is followed by death. Now, this is not a quick process. This doesn't just happen. This is like a frog put in water and the fire's turned up at a very slow temperature and you just don't realize you're in boiling water until it's too late. And this is why 90% of businesses fail, guys, in their first year. This is why. It's because they die. It's because day one only lasted a couple days. Day one, it only had a short season. And that ability to cultivate day one back, it's just there was no access to it. And then day two slowly crept in and then this, it's like the stasis thing happened, irrelevance happened, excruciating, painful decline, and then death. And if you find yourself in any of those stages, you are in day two and you are in a very dangerous place right now. You are in quicksand. You, you are in the uh, Bermuda Triangle. You are in a place that is very dangerous to your business and you've got to wake up. You've got to get back to day one, this day one mentality. So how do you do that? Well, Jeff Bezos said, we are internally driven to improve our services, adding benefits and features before we have to. We lower prices, increase value for customers before we have to. We innovate before we have to. And now a lot of you are going like, well, how would I do that? Like, what's, what's the strategy? And keeping an agile startup day one mentality can be difficult. And the number one thing that will keep this culture alive is keeping your business uh, from dying is the customer obsession. So the way to stay out of the day two and stay into the day one is just being obsessed with your customer, being as obsessed with where they are, being obsessed with what they want, being obsessed with how they want it. Like just being obsessed with that. And that will keep you in the innovation. That will keep you curious. That will keep you wondering how they're changing and their trends are changing, because they are. They're always changing. The world of your customers changing all the time. And this means that 90% of what you do and innovate around is based on your customer's feedback. And only 10% of it would be from those who work close to your customers. So you might think you're great at sales. 
You might think that because you come from a sales background and you know how to work with customers and have a lot of experience with customers, that that somehow gives you more credibility than your actual customers around how you should be doing what you're doing. And it's just not true. You should be innovating and changing what you're doing based 90% based on what your customer is saying. So our, this might be a good opportunity to ask yourselves, how are you even getting this information? How are you asking and having a conversation and a communication channel with your customers that has them giving you the feedback that would have you make the changes to acquire more of them? How well do you really know your customer and why they came on? How well do you understand the process that has them say yes? And what better person to ask than the one who did, right? But you make assumptions. You think because you're the one interacting with the customer that you know that answer. And the truth is you don't. Make high, so here's, we're going to move into the next phase of this. So make high quality and high velocity decisions. So at, at Amazon, this is like a crucial aspect to the 1997 Amazon to the 2021 Amazon, right? The one that was at, was making no money to the one that's worth over a trillion dollars now. A crucial aspect to maintaining day one culture is how a company approaches decision making as it grows. So you're you know you're a one man shop, just just like Jeff Bezos at his desk with you know Amazon.com spray painted on a billboard. <laughs> I mean, really, guys, that's where some of you are. You're just right there with Jeff Bezos, 1997. And it's like, what do you do to like cultivate this day one culture? And it really has to do with the decision making process. All companies strive to make high quality decisions, but you need to be able to make those decisions quickly and at scale. And it's much easier in a dynamic startup environment. Like when you're in startup mode, it's really easy to be like, yeah, we can move, we can turn, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And there are very few layers of communication or corporate hierarchy to navigate, right? You don't have teams yet. You don't have people you have to keep in the loop. You don't have like this team or this group that you have to keep the communication channel clear with. It's just you. So you want to make a change, you make the change, you see the results and you know, you, you move on. But as soon as you start adding team members, it starts to complicate this process and make it much more difficult. And so one of the, the really interesting things that Amazon does is this two pizza teams uh, rule. And it's really simple, but you want to think about this with your own organization. Like how do we keep things small to keep things innovative? And they're still doing this to this day. A trillion dollar business is still applying this concept. The first is the concept of the two pizza team. Meaning the team is small enough to be fed with two pizzas. That means you can get two pizzas and it would feed the group around whatever the group is up to, whatever they're assigned over, whatever their hierarchy is that they're over. Two pizzas. Keeping teams small also empowers them uh, with the autonomy and the speed they need to act as owners for their product and its customers. In practice, these are small decentralized teams of 10 or less people with a single threaded focus on a single service. The other way they do this that is completely applicable regardless of the size of your group is the difference between one way and two way doors. And this is a philosophy that is constantly taught at Amazon. Let me elaborate. So a one way door uh, is like this decision. So a one way door decision is one that has significant and often irrevocable consequences. So just imagine the door, but it only opens one way. What this would represent, uh, we'll go into just in just a little bit. A two-way door though, or a two-way door decision, on the other hand, is one that has like limited and reversible consequences. So it's not like this big long-term, you know, irrevocable consequences, the money will be wasted, all this other stuff. The two-way door is limited risk, but also reversible. We could pull it out, we can take it back, and if it doesn't work, we can, we can remove it. So an example of this, the one-way door decisions require a lot of capital, 
a lot of expenditure, planning, resources, and thus requires deep and careful analysis. These are foundational things that typically exist in an organization, but you want to know the difference between a one-way door decision and a two-day, or excuse me, a two-way door decision. And two-way doors have limited and reversible consequences, so you can pull them back. Uh, an example of this is A-B testing. A-B testing a uh, sales process as an example of something that can be easily pulled back. And Amazon, in every case where they make a decision, they ask this one question. Is that if, if this is occurring like a one-way decision, is there any way we can make this a two-way a two-way door decision? This feels like a really big decision. Is there any way we can shift this to a two-way door decision? Something that we could pull back. Something that's going to have less risk. Something that's going to be reversible. And that way you can make it fail, fail fast, pull it back, adjust, and then make another decision right after that. It allows your business to survive the innovation process. So embracing external trends and re resisting proxies. This is the, the, the final piece around how to maintain this uh, one day mentality. We live in a world that's constantly changing, guys, driven by rapid technological innovation, shifting regulation, governance demands, and even unplanned external things like shutdowns and acts of God. I mean, we've seen lots of that in the last two years. It is more crucial than ever that a company resists simply falling back on what they know at the expense of meeting changing customer needs. So don't, it's, it's just our human nature to go back to what we know works, to go back to the grind, to go back to hard, quote unquote, hard work. And I'm not saying there's not a, like you, you have to have that with your day one mentality, but just that alone will not be enough. It, you will slowly fall into day two, which will ultimately leave, lead you to the demise of your company. A company prone to day two thinking may find itself more internally focused on maximizing current margins and profitability instead of paying attention to current trends and boldly innovating on behalf of new and underserved customers. The biggest problem I see with our existing CODs is that the complacency that comes with making money. The, the internal thing that shows up that says I should... I should focus on bringing home more money rather than focusing on future growth. I should focus on taking home more rather than investing into our future as a company and this big payoff that's going to come later. It's just the internal uh, dialogue that we have to resist. We've got to embrace the external trends and resist proxies. And another way I would say this is we've got to keep focused on the long-term prize and give up the short-term payoffs. These little wins that really keep us from having the long-term massive win, right? So it's always day one, guys. And I know this isn't easy. I, I, I know from personal experience, I have been in day two. I've been in day two to the level and to the extent that I wanted to throw in the towel. It was so painful. It hurt so much to be in our business that I wanted to throw in the towel. I'm, I'm just as human as the rest of you. So it's not easy for a company to experience growth and stay innovative. Like I get it. The very nature of growth and operating a business at scale breeds additional complexity and with it a natural tendency to slow down. So I get like this thing that's like innovate, but now I got to maintain. And it's like maintaining all those processes, but still innovating on top of it. How do we do this? And to be, succe to be a successful company, you have to have this focus. And the focus is actually not that. It's like this not that focus and it's not that day two mentality. Focusing on short-term goals or processes instead of customer delighting outcomes. So guys, the, the takeaway here is how do I cultivate every day? How do I cultivate this day one mentality? How do I cultivate the energy of like, I'm, I'm at the ground floor. I am like 
right there, day one mentality around my energy, around working with my customers, around innovating. And I'm gonna do everything in my power to avoid this day two mentality. This focusing on just my little payoffs and my little short-term goals rather than focusing on the customer. And how do I get more of those when I have a win? All right, guys, thanks so much. My pleasure to be with you on this weekend. Um, really excited, actually, about where we're going. If you, there's, there's so much. And I, one of these days, I think on a Friday, I'm going to lay out like some of the innovation that we're doing right now uh, company-wide. But we are doing things to create a company that you will not recognize a year from now. Like you just won't recognize it. We are so focused right now on our, com our customer, not on our income. We're so focused right now on our customer that we are building a business that you will not recognize a year from now. And we're doing it before we have to. We don't have to do that right now. We have the revenue, we've got the money coming in. We're completely content with that and could be for the next five years. But we just know if you step out of the day one mentality, you're going to go into day two and it will be a slow temperature rising on the frog uh, in the pan of water, right? And we don't want to wake up one day and just realize, oh my gosh, the water is boiling around us. How did we get to this point? And so you guys are in the same boat as us. 